Hey guys, Slink here with another video and I just got something really cool in the mail. Let's go check it out. I'm really excited about this. It's the Sonarworks Reference 4 Studio Edition with a mic and uh, I've never used this before. I kind of know what it's about, but I figured we would unbox it and then put it to use together. We'll figure it out together. So let's open this bad boy up. So we got some instructions. Oh wow, look at that. Wow. That's the microphone there. That's amazing. And then what's in the bottom here? Just a bit of cardboard. Okay. This is mainly the, the only thing that came in the, in the uh, package there. Wow. I've never seen a microphone that looks like that. Looks like a lightsaber. Whoops. Let's go to get at this thing in here. Wow. Look at that. So there's the XLR connection on this side. And this is the business end, I, I guess. <laughs> wow. That looks so cool. Well, we got to figure out how to use it. So I guess we got to download the software. I'll meet you on the computer. Okay, so while we're installing the software, let me tell you a little bit about what Reference 4 actually is. So as you saw, it comes with a special type of instrumentation microphone. And we're going to be using that in conjunction with the software to measure the frequency response of our speakers in our studio. And after we calibrate it, it's going to give us a corrective equalization curve that we can use system-wide or on Ableton only. And that's going to give us a flat response, uh, which will help with our mix down. So right here, I'm just checking um, down a couple of things on the list here. Make sure phantom power is on for the microphone. Make sure the microphone doesn't have a direct output to the speakers. And we are only using one audio interface, so that's fine. And we just got to make sure that the sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz and we're on to the next step. I've already downloaded the microphone model numbers profile from the Sonarworks website and selected it here so we can just continue. Please adjust amplifier volume. My voice should sound in normal conversation volume. Left speaker. Right speaker. <laughs> okay, so I'm switching to the phone because my microphone cable is taken up by this bad boy here and this is a bit of a janky setup but the reference for a microphone um, doesn't fit a regular kind of microphone attachment so I had to <laughs> use some velcro straps and I didn't really have like a good microphone stand on hand so I've rigged up this <laughs> horrible mess but <laughs> right now this microphone is uh, exactly 34 inches from that Fostex logo and 34 inches from that Fostex logo and uh, roughly the same height as the Fostex logo as well. And this Fostex logo is about 34 inches away from that Fostex logo. So this is the ideal listening position. Um, you can see, you know, that's roughly where I'd be sitting. My head is roughly that height. So I think we can continue. Okay, so it asked me to place the microphone right next to the left speaker. So I've got it set up like this. It's in, it's pointing right at the center. It just says um, no further back than five inches from the speaker. So maybe I'll move it a bit closer actually. Let's get it right in there. <laughs> there we go, that's looking like mm, two inches. That should be good. So let's uh, hit start on that. So we push start and there's a little countdown and, and it starts to play little bleeps and bloops. A couple of sweeps in the low end. And test completed. So now we're going to flip over 
to the right speaker, same deal. Really interesting. So it's measuring the distance between the speakers. And look at that, two foot 11 inches. That's exactly the distance between my two speakers. I measured it with a tape measure. Isn't that crazy? So I've moved the microphone back to the listening position. And it's going to do some more bleeps and bloops. So at this point, it actually failed or it just kept going forever. So I thought I would change the buffer size on my sound card to be the lowest possible buffer size uh, that was available. And I just ended up starting again from the beginning and went through all the steps. So we'll skip ahead to where we were. There we go, nailed it. <laughs> that was so frustrating. Okay, so here's all the measurements that are gathered and I'm not exactly sure what these measurements at the bottom correlate to. Maybe I'll go back and adjust these measurements once I actually figure out what they're related to. Like, is that the distance between my listening position and the back wall or what? Because this is a tiny room, <laughs> two foot by one and a half foot. I'm not exactly sure. So I just skipped ahead and went, went to the next step. So welcome to the measurement phase. Um, so this is where we're actually going to be taking our measurements. And there's a little bit of a tutorial here. It asks you to always hold the measurement microphone at ear height. Um, so on my janky tripod that I've set up, it's roughly my ear height, which is good. And we want to have the microphone always facing towards the center of the two speakers. And I tried to do that. I just left the tripod on my chair and I slid the chair around. So here we go. So you can see it's asking me to move the microphone to that position. So I slide the chair back and try to get it in position. And it takes a measurement. And so on and so forth. There's 24 measurements to do in total. And there we go, we did it. And check out the frequency response curve. Pretty interesting. So after all that hard work, <laughs> we better save our calibration profile. And I'll just call it first calibration. Cool. Awesome. So we've got a calibration frequency response curve, which is really cool. So how do we use that now? Well, I think you can do a, a global system-wide calibration, or you can use it as a VST, I believe. Um, but let's just try the system-wide. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it's down here in the toolbar. We just click on it and we can add a new calibration profile. There's our calibration profile that we saved. And look at that. So it'll be adjusting um, the output of our speakers according to this curve, which is really cool. So do we push the on button? Oh, it's already active. Okay, look at that. So jumping over into Ableton now, uh, we should be able to see the Sonar Works Reference VST. And if we just put that on the master, let's see how, what this is all about. Add reference four as your last plugin on your output. Okay, and we continue. And then you, you bypass it when you're rendering. So it's creating a flat response in your specific situation. So if I bounced my song with the Sonarworks VST enabled on the end, then it might have bad effects in other people's rooms when they're listening to the, back to the song. So you wanna bypass it before you render. That's what they're saying there. Okay, 
Make sure you listen to a few reference tracks. That goes without saying, I'm gonna do that for sure. <laughs> and let's load our profile right here. Okay, and then we can select our reference curve and we'll just go with flat and it's enabled. So we're good to go. Latency zero, zero, that's amazing. So I'm gonna listen to a bunch of reference songs and see how they sound. So I just dragged in a song that I've been working on. Let's take a quick listen and I'll flip back and forth between the calibration. It won't mean much to you in your listening environment, but to me, sitting right here in front of my speakers with the calibration profile, I'm gonna be hearing a huge difference. Let's just take a listen, shall we? so crazy I, I feel like the corrective curve is is maybe too exaggerated but there's a neat dry wet knob you can adjust here so you can just dial back the overall correction and i think i'll i'll do that maybe i'm just used to my speakers being the way they are for so long i've been using these speakers for probably nine years or something that i'm due for an upgrade but it's definitely an interesting experience to hear a totally different sound out of your speakers. It's really, really bizarre. Let's try one of these simulations. French home hi-fi speaker simulation. <laughs> wow, that sounds so bad. <laughs> Popular consumer headphone simulation. Here we go, let's try this out. So much more bass. That's that's definitely uh, something you would see in a popular consumer headphone. They just crank the bass. Let's try home all speakers, average simulation. Oh man, when I turn it off, it's starting to sound wrong. Like there's, it's being colored and with it turned on, it sounds much better. I, I wrote this song without using Sonar Works. So I wonder if I would make any different decisions with the calibration on during an entire writing process. So that's something I'll have to experiment with. Look at all these different profiles. Pretty amazing. Uh, most of these are headphones, I guess. They have uh, calibration profiles for those particular headphones. I actually have this pair of headphones, the Sennheiser HD25s. So I might give that a go later on with my headphones. What I'm not seeing in here is anything by Bose. Oh wait, Bose Quiet, Quiet Comfort 35. I have that exact pair of headphones as well. Noise cancelling on and noise cancelling off. That's really cool because I know for a fact that Bose is definitely cranking the bass within the headphone. So I'm for sure going to try that with my Bose. Maybe I can get a flat response with the Bose. I've got them for, you know, being on the plane and whatever. Um, I like the noise cancellation, but you're not getting a flat response. So they're, they're useless for production. But maybe now with Sonarworks Reference 4, I can actually get some use out of this and, and not annoy everyone in my house <laughs> producing late at night. So I'll have to check that out for sure. So there you go. 
a little bit of a look into Reference 4 from Sonarworks. I think it's going to be a pretty valuable tool. I'm not sure if I'll use it all the time, but I might just be saying that because I'm not really used to it yet. It will take some time to get used to. And I've been using these speakers for so long, I know exactly how they sound. And in this studio, I've been in here for quite a while. I think I'll just try it, try and write a song, see how it goes uh, with the Sonarworks on and compare it to a song that I've previously written and just see how, if there's any improvement there or what. But overall, I love it. It's easy to use, easy to set up. I know that previously there was a problem with setting it up with a uh, system wide. So if you want to watch YouTube or whatever, it was a bit annoying or there, there was a, a dodgy workaround to try and get Sonarworks working for your overall system, but they've built that in to the new version. So that's a, a really nice addition. All the different profiles and stuff. I can't wait to bust out my Bose. <laughs> Some of you guys are going to be like, Bose, what the hell? But hey man, I fly a lot. The noise cancellation is good. And and maybe now I can use them with um, Sonarworks and actually do some work on, on the plane. We'll see. Cool. So thanks for watching guys. Peace. Get down. Oh,